and uh, to grow 25 percent is just the means to do it. I thought if you grow that much, you could create that business. And uh, so what I start to see is the opportunities to do that. So the decisions are made. You know, do I have an R&D department? Well, yeah, I can't grow without it. Do I have? Uh, do I go internationally? Do I have outside marketing, inside marketing? Uh, sure, those easy decisions because it's all based on where I'm going. Now, if you take the same company, same man, change the dream. Mm -hmm. I just want to retire a millionaire. I would um, get rid of half my staff. They're about the future. I would pick the high-profit jobs, make the books good, and sell it. Right. Only thing that changed was the dream. Same man, same company. The dreams are significant, and I don't know how to make a decision without it, without knowing those dreams. I have lots of my dreams for my family. I have dreams for my marriage. I have dreams for uh, my my spiritual life. I have dreams for the company. I have dreams for this class. Okay, so the. As I pursue that, I start to see those possibilities and those opportunities. And it's not, it's not magic. And I, I use it in the class. It's like buying a new red car. <laughs> Pretty soon, you see red cars everywhere. And the only thing that shifted is your awareness. Mm -hmm. When you have dreams, you become aware of what you're not aware of now. Okay. So the, the, it influences the present. And you've said several times... Don't make decisions based on what you thought. Make decisions based on where you want to go. Yes. And ask yourself, does this bring me closer or further away? Yeah. I, uh, every time I see an opportunity, I first ask, does, this, does this, take, this opportunity take me closer to this man God created or further away? And I, and I know who I am by the things I love and care about. And it's not in all that's wrong with me. It's the things that fit me to the core. When that's in my life, life is good. And I know he created a man that cares about those things. And I just be loyal to him. So an opportunity that would take me away from him, I don't do. Mm -hmm. So I don't care what it makes, what it pays. I'm not going there. Give, can and you it, give us a specific example? Uh, I can. Well, okay. the other one is... Does this opportunity take me closer to one of my dreams or further away? And if it's yes to both of them, I do it. So when I started this class, it would be a good example. Good. I, uh, I knew the dean of engineering and science because I was on a different board with him. And he was saying the senior engineers had great class projects, but anybody wanted to start a little grad shop, nobody had a clue how to do that. <laughs> so I was telling him I love the entrepreneur world. And he said, well, why don't you teach it? So... I asked, does this opportunity take me closer to the man? And I know I love the challenge. And does it take me closer to where I want to go? I want to grow my company. And if I could teach people how to reinvent themselves in their departments, I could, I could stand that growth. So he offered me an opportunity to do that, fit both, of, both those things. So my first day as a teacher with no training, <laughs> no experience, <laughs> is senior engineers, university level. <laughs> and how nervous were you? I screwed it up really bad the first class because I, I kind of panicked. I thought I should be whatever I thought a professor was, which I didn't know. And I put everybody in a coma in about 10 minutes. And so I, I lost them. So the next day I, I committed, I made a commitment to them. I said, I will teach you how to bring something in the future that doesn't exist now and how the entrepreneurial world works, what's cause and effect. That's my commitment to you by the end of this class. And I will teach, I will, I will take this class nationally and internationally, do it two hours a week, do it without any money. And that's my commitment to me. And that's before the class existed. But I learned something a long time ago. Never be the one that limits you. And the how-to will show itself. If they don't throw me out, which <laughs> was a good chance they would, <laughs> the how-to will show itself. And so this whole class evolved out of that 16 Isn't years that ago, something? and I'm still teaching it. 16 years and, ago. And it's all I ask is to take me closer to the man and closer to one of my dreams. And, and every class is class different. Class. So that's all I do. I live my life that way. That's what I do. And so I don't have to mastermind the rest of my life because the future doesn't belong to me. The future, to me, is not mine. 
I can dream about it, but I don't own it. I do not know I'm going to get home tonight. There's no way I can know the future. Yet we all try to plan that whole thing way out there as if we could know. So I make plans, but I don't live them. Every morning I get up and say, uh, look at the opportunities and ask, does this take me closer or further away? I'm, I, the, I don't want to live the plan. It's hard to make plans, you don't live them. I don't know if I answered your question or you not. You did. You always do. It's good. So, I, I just think that everything you say is so profound that it's hard for me to keep moving on. Plan all you want. Just don't fall in love with the plan. And you kind of just touched on that. Yeah, that's what I just because, said. And I, if I recall in class, you said, cause, and th- all the great philosophers say this, you don't know how it's going to turn out. Just no. trust that it's going to turn out. Yeah. To me, it's a journey. Just head that way. Yeah. You know, just head towards your dreams and be loyal to who you are. And uh, you'll be amazed at where you'll end up a year from now. So one thing that you told us to ask ourselves was, what do I want to leave people with? I'm asking yeah. you that now. What do you want to leave people with? If nothing else that you get, success has nothing to do with what you're not. And that you uh, run with what you got. And that you uh, don't be the one that limits you. I would like to leave that. I love it. Very good. Very good. So. Okay. Um, You said a lot about reaching your goal. And when you reach your goal, do you celebrate? Well, there's a big difference between a goal and a dream. Okay. A, I have no sense of arrival. Oh. So okay. I don't have a sense of that. Okay. A goal, you know how to do it. You know what take, where it starts, what takes place in the middle, and where it ends up. And you know how to do every bit of it. And a goal, it's like that. A dream is quite different. You don't know how to do it. You don't know how to get there. You just believe it can. So that's a distinction between a goal and a dream, at least the way I see it. Have you reached any of those landmarks that you... Way beyond my imagination. Okay. He's Way never beyond. had a dream he hasn't reached. No, none of okay, them. So the problem I got, this farm boy can't dream big enough, so I'm hanging around with people who dream bigger. <laughs> so do you celebrate when you get there? No. I never no. have a sense of arrival. No, that's right. But he loves you. It's like your whole life is a celebration anyway. So I love my life. Yeah. And I think the, if you start to make every decision about who you are and where you're going of course every little thing you do every opportunity of course you build a life you love just be loyal to you be loyal to the woman that's good advice be loyal to the woman in so many ways Mm -hmm. i love it you told us about a book called the dream giver by bruce wilkinson you recommended that book yeah um and i have two books of course, you can't read or write. I got two books. <laughs> yes, you do. And do, can we buy those books? You yeah, gave them to, them to us. I give them to you. Okay. It's not. Um, I don't. I, this is not an endeavor I make money on. This endeavor. This is the thing I do on the side, and I like doing it. And I, uh, I make my money on the base company, and I don't have to make money on this. I think I make sure everybody pays something so that that you have uh, some investment in it. Right. You know, so that you got to be committed to the class too. So. Right, and the and one of the books, and I admire you so much for this, uh, is about being dyslexic, yeah. and you help dyslexic children. Yeah, I'm on the board of the governors for the Dyslexic Foundation here in Bay City, and uh, I told I'm the, I'm the only dyslexic on the board i told them is that, that right yeah i told them the inmates are taking over the <laughs> <laughs> that's good to know they're coming to get you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny and we saw this lovely uh video that was produced very well and it was your core you showed your core and yeah. that just endeared you to us all even more well, where you, he I talked think. about being dyslexic yeah. and how difficult it was. So I, I thank you for being who you are. Well, thank you. And I thank you for being who you are. Thanks. 
I got a glimpse of you. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You know my core. And um, I, I wish I wish you so so many blessings and uh, a continued wonderful life and and I hope that you'll come see us frequently. Well, thank you, and I will. Good. Thanks. Because it it was great fun. And gosh, if you didn't learn something tonight. You're not learn. You drank too much wine. If you didn't learn something tonight, not you. I mean the people that are listening. <laughs> and that wasn't me because I learned stuff. And some of the stuff that I learned was, and th- these are huge things. A success has nothing to do with what you're not. It has everything to do with what you've got. Mm-hmm. And if you just tweak yourself a little bit and start focusing on that, you're going to notice a big difference in the way that your life that you live. And one of my favorite sayings, and I told you this, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Yes. And that's by Dr. Wayne Dyer. And those two little pieces of wisdom right there are life-changing. And that's what I mean when I say that you're right up there with the big boys, and you don't even know it. But <laughs> the stuff that comes out of your mouth is so profound and so deep and and yet it's so simply said that everybody can understand it and you're you're just really a a really cool guy really cool guy well thank you you're welcome so and you're an official diva now yeah you're part of the devolution what now is, what is a diva again <laughs> a diva is a woman that knows herself and loves herself in spite of it ah. so you can it can, you can put man in there instead of okay woman all right Okay, thanks. Uh, see if I have a feminine side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. So um, coming up this week on Saturday, we have Jeanette Dinan, who is the host of About Those Oils, uh, that's live on Tuesdays at noon, is teaching an oils class. And I'll tell you, our last one was really good. We got to take home bath salts and uh, makeup remover. And it's I love that stuff. It's really good. So this week, I don't know what she's going to make, but she brings us treats. And it's only $10, and you walk out of here with a lot more than $10 worth of stuff. So it's at 1030. We do require reservations because she brings food and supplies. So if you would like to be part of that, message us on Facebook, The Devolution, or W4 Divas, or me personally, and we'll save you a seat. We still have a few left. Uh, and it is kind of limited, uh, so do that. Are you coming, Stace? What about you? I'm on a oh, darn it. Are you coming? How about you, Deb? I have no idea. Oh, <laughs> so we'll talk about it later then. Okay. So then I'll, on September 6th, and I can't believe it's going to be September already. Wowza. Uh, is Dino at Vino, one of Woo! my favorite nights. And that's when... The Devolution Project, we're just divas doing good. We do something good for ourselves and something good for our communities every quarter. And we're going to get together at Vino on September 6th at 6 o'clock. And we, I have a new thing for us to do, so I'm real excited to tell everybody about it. Besides the Christmas thing, if you will remember, last year we did Fundapalooza for the homeless shelter where we raised canned good foods for them. Well, this year we have a sister company that is just starting out that needs our help. And we're going to arrange to be a support to her because that's what divas do. Yes, we do. And then on September 9th, we have a journaling class. And that's going to be really fun because we talk about all the different ways to journal. And that you don't just have to have one journal. You can have one a legacy journal where you write lessons that you learn and you leave them for your children. Or you have a journal where, a forgiveness journal, where if somebody hurts your feelings, you write in there. So there's all different kinds of ways to journal. And then on the 16th, we're doing vision statements. And I've been wanting to do these for a long time. So they're, it's like a written out vision board for you to follow. And it's really good. It's really good. So. Mark your calendars for About Those Oils this Saturday. Dino's at Vino's on the 6th. Journaling on the 9th. And Vision Statements on the 16th. 
So again, I th thank you, Terry Dupin.